Welcome to Pitmaster, an old Virginia smoke podcast. I'm your host, Luke Darnell. It is American Royal Week. We are finally here after two long years. Very excited. It's early Monday morning. I just trimmed my briskets. I'm getting ready to trim my chicken before I hit the road for a solid 16 to 18 hours. So, very excited to get moving. American Royal is the biggest barbecue competition in the world. So this week, we're going to try and have four episodes as everyone heads to Kansas City. We are having some scheduling difficulties, so don't hold me to it if we don't hit all four. But our first episode this week is a teammate special interview uh, with Kim and Leanne. And this week, they have David McAllister from 913 Barbecue out of Kansas City. David cooks with his wife, Bethany, who is a terrible teammate. So this should be an amazing episode. I kid, Bethany. I kid. While you're enjoying this podcast, please share it out on your social media from both your page and your team's page. It really does help us a lot. And also be sure to like the podcast on the service of your choice. Every little bit helps. So please join me in welcoming David McAllister. The Barbecue League is the ultimate barbecue experience. And here's why. One small annual investment from you instantly unlocks all 70 plus tell all recipes, enthusiast recipes, restaurant tours, and more in their unmatched library. This isn't your typical YouTube type content. World champions like Getting Basted, Shake and Bake Barbecue, Heavy Smoke Barbecue, La Pasadita Barbecue, and 913 Barbecue share their full tell all recipes. No secret is left unsaid, and a new video release is guaranteed every single week of your membership. You'll also see unfiltered looks from all levels of pitmasters during their live competition coverage. And those same pitmasters are accessible through the league's upbeat online community. As soon as you sign up, you'll also have a full arsenal of some of the best discounts in barbecue from brands like Snake River Farms, Blues Hog, Big Papa Smokers, Gunter Wilhelm, Gateway Drum Smokers, and more. The Barbecue League puts on members-only contests throughout the year, hosts live and virtual events, and offers a full access league lounge at participating events. Our listeners to this podcast can receive $10 off of the $100 annual membership this month only, well, this month and leading up to the Royal, by using the code AugustPitmaster on thebarbecueleague.com. That's AugustPitmaster on thebarbecueleague.com. You don't want to miss this content and all of this learning. It is one hell of an investment. All right. Well, everyone, welcome to Pitmaster, an OVS uh, podcast. And we have a very special guest with us today. But before we get to our guest, we wanted to let you know that you are hearing some different voices. You've heard us maybe at the very beginning of the podcast when it first got started. But we decided to do a team version of the podcast. So I am Kim Darnell, one of your hosts. And I am Leanne Terry, another one of your hosts. You know, they say behind every good male pit master, there's uh, at least two uh, strong female team members helping out. And uh, we are the, the thing that proves that. But uh, we also are, are going to flip the, the page on that here with our guest. 11 grand championships, 15 reserve grand championships, according to the good folks at barbecuedata.com. And let's not forget the 2016 American Royal World Series of Barbecue Invitational Championship. We've got David McAllister from 913 Barbecue here. Welcome. I will say that I kind of do flip that script because you could say that behind every female pitmaster, there's a very bearded, handsome man. That's precisely what we were trying to go for. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and we can't always have that. We can't always have that. And you have something special on your team. <laughs> Right. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate this. And to let you know, this could be a revenge or a rebuttal type of of show tonight, because I know that Bethany was our second guest ever on the podcast. So I don't know if there is anything else that we need to delve into or talk about from there. So feel free to let us know if there's anything that you wanted to to dive into to start off with. Any official rebuttals or air that needs to be clear. This would be a horrible time to mention that you didn't listen to it. Well, <clears throat> we we should probably just put it out there that 
Bethany has gotten to the point where she doesn't even show up at barbecue contests anymore until Saturday morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I uh, pretty much go to the contest, set it up. I prep all the meat and do all that. And then I wake up early and start the pit. And Bethany just comes trotting in, takes all the trophies and all of the glory. And so everybody just, you know, lets me just sit in the background like I'm nothing. So, so what, what you're saying know. is she's following the Myron Mixon model. Is that right? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I've, I've only had a few interactions with Myron, and I really love that guy. But his personality on TV kind of fits Bethany, you know, all about himself, all about all about himself. And so <laughs> that kind of fits with Bethany. I know Luke. Uh, Luke had the experience, you know, with Bethany showing up with her coffee and all primp and proper, you know, strolling in in the morning after he'd already been up cooking for a few hours. He comes strolling in. Mm -hmm. No coffee for him. You know, no. Nope. That's, yeah. No. And, and that's he's not the least bit bitter about that at all. <clears throat> I told him he chose the wrong one. I chose him to, told him he chose the wrong one. Because, so he uh, should have chosen you, the pretty one. He should have. I know. That's, you know. And after cooking with Brad a few times, you know, since 2016, we haven't really won much. Like, we kind of went on a downslide and, you know, got in our own heads and stuff. And I went out and cooked with Brad a few times. And I came back and I told Bethany, I'm like, I think I know how to win again. But you just, you need to stay away. Stay out of my way. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I need more rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got to have more control of this now. I, uh, uh, we have really changed our program though since 2016. We're, uh, we, we, uh, we kind of got to where we, you know, we weren't really cooking that well anymore, and wasn't really fun anymore. And so, you know, <clears throat> we made the decision that, you know let's just completely change things up and make it exciting. Kind of like we're starting over again. So we completely changed what pit we cook on, completely changed our program this year. And, and so far, you know, we've been a little more consistent this year. We're not cooking a whole lot, uh, but we are, uh, we are doing a little, being a little more consistent. So it so makes it a little bit more fun when you actually, you know, Hear your name called a few times. Yes. Absolutely. That's kind of the one thing that brings you back every time. And I know that things got more exciting in our trailer, too, when we switched from the backwoods to the Jambo. And it was a whole new way of cooking. And when you don't get those calls that you sometimes are accustomed to, it does take you back a little bit. But when you're having fun of the challenge of learning something new, that makes it so much more exciting, like you were saying. Is there anything else that you did besides, you know, changing your program to, to make it more fun? Like, obviously, winning is more fun, but, like, did you, you know, did you have to have a talk about, you know, your approach, your attitude, the things that you're doing in preparation, um, anything like that? Well, we, we actually, yeah. I mean, that's a good question because there are little things like that that I think, like, we got away from, like, Bethany – used to always make uh, burritos. And there was a uh, another team that would uh, that started making burritos too, and it turned into this little battle. And we called his burritos the hate burritos and Bethany's <laughs> the love burritos. And she had stickers made and put on there. And it, it was just a fun thing. And, uh, and then, you know, it just got to where, you know, life and just busy and we started cooking so much that we didn't do that anymore. And, and now this year we brought that back and, you know, we make burritos and hand them out and uh, at contests. And it kind of is a way of, of, you know, getting out there and, and meeting newer teams that you haven't, you know, you may have not known and stuff and, and forces you to kind of get out of your little bubble at a contest and, and go talk and stuff. But I, I mean, other than chicken, chicken, we've, been doing the same forever. I mean, that you don't mess with something. You don't mess with something that seems. No, to you all are super solid in chicken. and chicken. And, uh, but everything else we completely changed. Like we changed what meat we're cooking. You know, we went to, we were, we were really trying everything. You know, we were trying Smithfield, Prey Fresh, anything we could get our hands on. And now we're very strict with, we, 
you know, Prairie Fresh is what we use. Um, it's allowed us to be a little more consistent because our meat's been a little more consistent. We're actually a little pickier when we're, uh, you know, getting our meat. Before it was kind of, you know, you know, give me four butts, I'll use three of, you know, I'll take three of them. Give me two packages of two. I don't really care. I'll deal with it, you know. And now, we'll uh, if we have the opportunity, we'll open them, and and if we don't like them, we'll go get more. And I think all of that stuff really does make a difference. Yeah. It does. That consistency yeah. truly yeah. does make a difference. You're right about that. You were talking about some of the processes that you have changed. And are there any responsibilities? You were talking a little bit about the things that you do. And then Bethany swoops in later and comes in and takes the glory. But what are, are there any other things that you do, other responsibilities, or maybe some things that you do that Bethany doesn't realize that you take on? Uh, I don't think she understands how hard it is to be the pretty one of the team. It, it's, it's a full-time job. I, mean, I know exactly what you mean. You got to go out and you got to shake hands. And, and it's, I'm not a big politics kind of guy, but I mean, you've got to get out there and, you know, shake, shake, you know, hands, kiss babies, be inappropriate if you have to with, with, cause there's a lot of handsome men in barbecue and, I like giving myself, a, you know, giving a hug to a nice, handsome man. You know, yeah. that's why that's why the first thing I do when I see Luke is give him a big squeeze because he's a big old lug that I just and I, you know, there's a lot of work to it with being that. No, all kidding aside, um, I would say probably the thing that she doesn't realize is, is um, so I'm on the board at the KCBS board. And so it's gotten out that I'm on the board. And so when I show up to a contest, I really don't want to be in the, with my board hat on. I want to be there as a team and kind of, and when I'm unloading and stuff, it seems like that's a lot of times when people come up to talk to me about, you know, something, you know, complain about something or they have an idea or something. And so it, it really delays the, the unloading process and stuff. And I think that's something that, that she probably, you know, it's like how you're unloading a smoker and, and putting a tent up. How hard is that? But it's, it's, there's a little bit more to it. And so it gets you that, out of your groove. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing earth shattering, but that would probably be the main thing that she hasn't experienced no. with me. And I'm glad you brought that up because I had meant to, to bring up the fact that you are on the board. So I'm glad that you did talk about that because that is a, a big job and a big role of making sure that, everything is running the way it should be with KCBS. And that in that's an, just, and I know when you're putting up your tent and you're trying to do other things, it is a testament to who you are, that you do listen to everybody and you do care so much about making sure KCBS is successful. But I, it is also an extra burden when you're wearing two hats and you're, and you're trying to be there just for your 913 team. So I'm curious when people are bending your ear to, uh, and, and wanting you to put your board hat on. You don't have to name names, but what's the worst idea or suggestion that you've heard from somebody about how to fix quote unquote competition barbecue? Oh man. Um, you know, I don't necessarily think any of them are bad ideas. I just think that the same thing that I misunderstood going into this was how wide and spread the the level of um, the user base is in far as far as because I'm more I'm a tech guy and so a lot of the stuff I get is about you know the website and the you know the tech and like the CBA you know they they have a mobile app for their judging and and you know that kind of stuff and it's uh, it. I think it's, uh, you know, a lot of times, and I had the same thing going in. I had all these plans of, you know, we were going to, we were going to get to where we were using barcodes for our boxes and everything. And the thing that, that I didn't realize was, was the wide user base that we have in their tech skill. And so with, uh, I don't know how to word this without, you know, sounding Burn that bridge, David. Burn yeah, but it, it's, it's, we have people like 
we have reps and we have judges and stuff that have trouble and teams for that matter that they have trouble just resetting their password on the website and and to think that that we're going to be able to rapidly move over to a point where we can use barcodes and stuff like there's so many other things that need to be resolved and 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 taken care of just in the you know the stuff this i'm finally just you know i'm two years in and i'm finally getting to where we're going to start you know getting you know some information out about the api that we're going to be exposing but there was so much internal work that needed to be done to automate some of those services and i think that that's just that's stuff's really not known you know it, it's they don't know what the girls and the, and the guys in the office are doing and, and mm -hmm. how much of that stuff is kind of manual. And, and that was just something that, you know, I didn't know until I get in. So I would say probably the craziest things are when people talk about, you know, like getting to where we're using a, a mobile app for judging and, and that stuff, I think is we're a bit of, we're quite a bit of ways away from as an organization having that, be our number one thing but that being said uh, that is that is my goal like i think we should be um, mm -hmm. you know even if it's just for certain contests like the royal um you know contest that large how much better you know how much better would it be if all of our scoring was being done digitally and we didn't have to worry about uh people keying that in and, and, you know, stuff happening with that. If it was all digital and right. judges were doing that and you could have it all centralized. So I definitely think that we will get to that point. It's just not as, as broad as and quickly as I thought we would when mm -hmm. I came into it with, you know, my eyes wide, you know, just right. Like, yeah. No, I understand that. So talking about KCBS and just your team in general, what kind of keeps bringing you back week after week? Uh, I got to say it's the, you know, mostly the people like getting, you know, I know that Brad and I, uh, Brad and I have talked about like traveling a little bit more next year. Uh, mm -hmm. He's, you know, he says he's not going to be running for team of the year again next year, but you know, we'll, uh -huh. you know, Sarah and I have discussed and we'll believe it when we, you know, right. He's but, got the bug. Uh, He's got the bug. We'll believe it when we see it. Yeah. And, you know, I guess if I started cooking that well, you know, and got on a run like that, I'd probably ride it out like that, too. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're, you know, traveling a little more, going out, like cooking on the East Coast, like seeing, you know, like newer things. Like Brad and I, earlier this year, we flew in, flew into Vegas and then went out to California, you know, drove out to California from Vegas and cooked a contest. And That's awesome. That kind of stuff is, you know, like, like you, you cook fewer contests, right? Because the cost of doing those doesn't allow you to cook more contests. But I, that's the kind of stuff, you know, just meeting the new people, seeing, you know, seeing people that you have, you don't normally see in your every day, but, you, you know, you see them over the weekend and try to get next to them at a contest and you just kind of hang out, you know, it's kind of, kind of like, I'm, I'm a big, you know, Bethany and I are big college football fans college athletics and tailgating is a big part of our you know experience when, when we go to a k-state game and that's what barbecue contests remind me of it was just a you know just a fun tailgate you know with a little bit of competition you know instead of going into the game we're cooking some meat and turning it in and feeding six strangers that's right exactly and then we're getting ready to you know to go to the royal which is the, the barbecue snow globe, as we like to call it, and it, the biggest tailgate that you're going to have. In the pre-show pre-show interview, you, you mentioned you know, what was taking up most of your time. You mentioned working 70, 80 hours a week and then football season starting up. And of course, we've got barbecue going on and you're talking about going out and even trying to, to travel more for barbecue. Um, how do you stay organized? What type of organizational tools or habits? How do you keep things? How do you keep things separate? Does stuff bleed over? Uh, can you tell us sort of about how you know you take your approach to to maintaining um, all of these different loves? Oh, so you guys haven't heard of Bethany's uh, the clipboard. Uh, the clipboard, yeah, it's the uh, 
the clipboard. Everything that goes into the prep of a contest is on the clipboard. And 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 I'm not kidding you. If it's not on the clipboard, it it does not get remembered from one contest to the next. So like, you know, if we need something on the clipboard or need something for a contest that we're starting to use new, like I have to make sure it gets added to the to the sheet that she prints out for the contest because it will not make it into the trailer or or into the truck or anything it, it we both will completely forget about it um but as far as organizing at a at a contest and do it like i believe i'm a firm believer in in as much as you can repeat you know and and when stuff starts going well obviously you want to repeat that every week but but we do a lot of things, you know, at the same time, like, like we try to, to inject and rub our meat at the same time in a con, you know, we try to trim during the week at the same time, you know, during the week, right. we try to do like our prep is very rigid and we've cooked, you know, a hundred and well, 50, I don't even know how many contests we've cooked over a hundred contests. And so we, you know, we, we, as far as the prep and stuff goes, that hasn't changed a whole lot. You know, we've changed recipes, type of meat, you know, how we trim, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, that stuff has kind of stayed the same. Now, mm -hmm. as far as the traveling and doing that, um, I was kind of just along for the ride with Brad. Um, I think Brad has some emotional things where he doesn't like to be alone, maybe. So, you know, asked me to go along with him. I, you know, I, I'm not sure on that. But, uh, but that was, I was just kind of hanging on, you know, traveling along but next year we're planning on trying to like i'll try to cook too you know where we'll just go out there together but be separate teams and cool stuff. that's yeah. awesome wow so i have a question following up the clipboard and the being organized so say something goes awry and it's not on the schedule it's not on the clipboard how do you handle bethany when she might get upset or wound up or bogged down with the problem that's happening right in the middle of a cook so bethany actually is probably more the calm one okay i'm the irrational crazy one <laughs> and uh like yeah she typically just kind of flows with it but i've uh um i've been trying to be more yeah that's that was another kind of thing this year where it's where you know eh, you know not worrying so much about you know if something doesn't go as planned, kind of just going with the flow uh, and cooking on a new pit and learning how to cook on a stick burner and manage a fire and stuff. Um, there have been quite a few of those where, you know, we didn't really manage the fire so well. There was a uh, kind of a, an example of, of where things really went awry was uh, we were in Olathe early in the year and I was uh, on my Segway and cruising around being a social butterfly, talking to people. And Bethany sent me a text and uh, ribs were getting ready to go on. And she said that the cooker was smoking really bad. So I, you know, got on the Segway and was scooting over there. And, and the mm -hmm. next thing I know, I'm face planted and oh. um, I'm cursing and I'm right in front of the Boy Scout tent and I'm, you know, dropping F-bombs and, you know, they're coming over and it was just horrible. I get up and I'm pulling my, uh, my Segway behind me like a little kid pulling his wagon and just saying, I'm done with this thing. I'm throwing it away. I'm never riding it again, pouting again, pouting the whole way back to the tent. Get back to the tent. I got this huge egg in my head, you know, and, and, you know, got a headache and, it, you know, and that, was probably, you know, it was right when we were getting ready to put on ribs, so right at eight o'clock, you know, and so Bethany kind of had to like work with it and figure it out, you know, like, because typically the fire thing is, is more of my realm, like, you know, she manages, you know, getting the stuff ready and on the, you know, in the morning and stuff, and I'm managing the fire. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and, but when she gets there, it gives me a little more freedom to go around and stuff because she can handle it. She just, you know, I'm the one that's already dirty and messy. And anyway, and uh, so that one kind of threw us off. And uh, I mean, I had black eyes and oh no, 
bump. I'd scratches all over my face, and, you know, and you know. Like I'm taking my balls. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. But you know, of course, because Bethany's so violent, people, you know, were questioning: Did she hit me? Did she right. hit you? You know, because I don't know if you know if you've seen. She's pretty violent. For the people out there, Bethany is like super tiny and super nice. So this is, you know, kind of satire. You know? I know. I don't know if she has yeah. a mean bone in her body. At I least know. I've never I seen know. it. Maybe at home, you know, she, yeah. she pinches you and, and it doesn't show up on the, on your arm or we can see it. Yeah. Just super selfish. That's, you know, that's <laughs> super selfish. <laughs> the good people at Barbecue Data would like me to update you that it's 160, 160 competitions to date so far. Impressive. Nice. Um, you talked a little bit about, you know, she's the one who, who calms you down, um, and you have a, a very regimented system, including the clipboard. Uh, do, you ever, do you ever just go with your gut? Do you ever just follow a gut instinct to try something different, wild, Anything like that? Do you have any example of where that's worked out for you or not and in influencing your strategy? Oh, yeah. So I tend to be more that way than Bethany, especially when we're when we're going to turn in. Turn ins, you know, is kind of where the magic happens. Like that that can kind of make or break you, you know, and 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 what direction you go with that. And uh it seems like whenever I get that urge to, you know, let's Let's try something different. Let's just come on. Let's just try it, Beth. Let's just try it, and we do it. It never seems to work. So, um, so she kind of stops me on that, you know, with that. But uh, earlier this year, uh, like brisket is my nemesis. Like that's that's our nemesis. Like we, it seems to be the category that hurts us more times than it helps us. Um, and so, like. I, I continue like for a long time, we got really far off on we, and that's a drawback to when you cook a lot, like when you're cooking every weekend, it's kind of easy to get off on what you consider your tenor, you know, the tenderness you're going for and stuff. If it, it, anyway, like you just get in your own head and it's a little bit easier, I feel. So I, uh, um, brisket team seems to be the one that I'll play around with a lot, um, which may be why it doesn't work out very well for us very often. But, but, uh, earlier this year we were scoring. Okay. I mean, we weren't, you know, we were like 170, 171, which isn't going to yeah. kill you, but yeah. it's not going to help you win a contest. And, and so I, uh, I, I told Beth, I'm like, I think we need to go like heavier with the salt. Like, I think we need to amp it up you know, more. And <laughs> we get a comment card too salty. salty. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I would say more times than not that it, it goes awry, but we typically at a contest though, we won't really go too crazy. We'll do it at home first before we'll try right. a contest. So when we were talking in the pre pre-show, you had mentioned some superstitions that have kind of come back. And you were mentioning some possible shenanigans that might be happening at the Royal. And I don't want to, to let the cat out of the bag with that, but what's it's not a cat, not a cat. No, it's, <laughs> it's not, not a cat. cat. No. So no. what are some superstitions that maybe have come back or have emerged for you all this season? Well, we, we talked earlier and I brought up the burritos thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, that's a little superstitious that, you know, mm -hmm. doing that gives us good karma for the day, even though saying that means it, you know, nullifies the good karma part of it. But I, uh, um, I like to mess with, with teams and people that I know. And so one of the things that, and it ended up becoming a superstition thing and backfired, I would not backfired, but I haven't been able to do it this year was I bought a bunch of uh, beanie babies, unicorn beanie, beanie babies to put on people's smokers at night when they're sleeping. Cause I get up a little earlier than, than most people anymore to start my pit and stuff. And so it gives me time to go put that around and put it on people's smokers and mess with them, you know, see them in the morning when they're like, who did this, you know, kind of thing. 
But I, uh, um, so I bought a whole box of these Beanie Babies. And the first contest, I did it. I put it on a, a Colby with, he's a local team with Bones Brigade. And I put it on his cooker. And funny story, he texted me when he got home. And his kids didn't understand why a grown man was giving another grown man a unicorn Beanie Baby. But I found that, I'm like, that's exactly why. Because that's funny. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh. And we did, I mean, we did okay. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible, you know, but the next contest, I forgot to do it and we did really well. Mm -hmm. And so since that contest, I've had the Beanie Baby in our trailer sitting in the same spot that it's been in since that contest. And I won't give any more out because... <laughs> in my mind, like, I can't mess with that. Right. Like there's something with that. Right. And I, it, Karma, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Superstitions. I'm, I'm ridiculous. I, it, this is way back when I was in middle school, like, you know, with sports in middle school, like I would wear the same underwear I would wear, you know, it, I mean, it went, it's been that I do that now for contests. Mm -hmm. I have the pair of contests I wear on Friday. The pair or pair of underwear I wear on Friday, the pair of underwear I wear on Saturday. And you know, these doubles like the Royal completely throw me out of my game. Cause then it's just, you know, what do I do? What do I do? I can't wear the same pair because, you know, I'm not a small man and it's gonna be hot at the Royal. So that's not gonna work out. And so yeah, those kind of doubles throw me off because I'm very particular about what I wear and when I wear it. Uh so, yeah, superstitions are, I, I got some really interesting ones. Do, do you have any specific to the Royal? I'm just curious. You know, you did have uh, that great win in 2016. Um, is there any, do you have a specific spot that you have to go to, a place that you have to go to lunch or a person that you have to visit? With the Royal, no, we, we really don't. Um, I will say, though, that in 2016, we went to the town hall meeting in person. We again did that this year. And when Bethany asked me, why are we going to go to it? We know what they're going to say. And you could actually dial into it. I told her, well, we went in 2016. So, and that was all it took. Like I just said that and she's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so, right. But yeah, other than that, yeah, really no, uh, nothing special with the Royal. I'm glad you were talking about superstitions and a little bit about you. You were talking about your job and the KCBS board. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions that people might have about you? Oh, about me? Yeah, I mean, bar, yeah because they might see you as a certain way on 912 or a certain way on the board. So what do you think people might misconstrue about you when they see you out on the trail or do you think that you're an open book and you are what they see yeah they, i'm pretty much what they see i wear my uh i pretty much wear my emotions on my sleeve and and you know i i personally i don't care if someone likes me or doesn't like me um and if i'm not a fan of somebody i you know i make sure that they know i don't like them so that I don't have to interact with them. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that, you know, if there's any miss, uh, yeah. One thing I don't like, and this has happened a little bit on the, with the board is I don't like when somebody says that I did or said something that I did not, or mm -hmm. there was an incident, um, there was an incident last year where somebody was telling teams that I voted a certain way oh. on an item and it was not correct. It was not me that voted the way that in, and that, that bothered me, even though it really shouldn't. But, you know, when you're dealing with an entity like that, it, like, you know, when it's out there and it's public knowledge that they can look and see how I voted, you know what I mean? Like, that stuff kind of bothers me. So, right. but I don't know if that's a miss. I don't know if that, you know, is a related to how people perceive me or not, but uh, 
No, that's, that, that, that's a good pet open. peeve to talk about. That's good. That's yeah. a, it sounds to me like a pet peeve. As far as, you know, I pretty much people know what I am, what I'm about. And people know that you know, if they need my help and I can help them, I'll do what I can. Especially if I like you. I mean, even if I don't like you, if I can help you, I'll probably help you. But I'll do whatever I can if I like you. Um, yes. And so, you've always been super approachable. I, I know I have not had the opportunity to spend as much time as with you and Liam as well as Luke has. But one thing that I definitely could say, I love it. You, 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 I like the fact you call a spade a spade <laughs> and you're very approachable. And you, you always you always know when you when you talk with you, you know what you're getting and you all you will bend over backwards almost to a fault to help someone. And it's, it's so nice to have someone that you can talk with and confide with in. And it's, it's always great when you can be neighbors with, with you and Bethany and be able to talk with you all and have fun with you all. Was there anybody that you had any interactions with, or was there anybody who really, you know, sort of helped you out at the beginning of competition barbecue that, you know, in, in, lives up to that idea you know I, we've always said that you know most barbecue teams will you know do anything for you uh, in addition to the competition there's a, a very big cooperative element of it who who sort of gave you the biggest hand when you were starting out uh you know when we started there were quite a few of the guys that were cooking on a regular basis that i'm not shy by any means and and when we first started I am what uh, some people might have referred to as um, the drunk. So you guys remember that first season of Pit Masters when the drunk guy gets in Johnny Triggs' face? And, and oh, yeah. That, that was me when we first started. Like, I was a drunken just – and I remember uh, Tim Grant. And this was when True Bud was still cooking a lot, and they mm. were just rolling. And I – was so and this was in McLeod, Kansas, and I was just so hammered. I mean, just <laughs> I would drink a whole bottle of Captain Morgan at a contest. Like that was it was so fun to me. Like I loved barbecue contests because I would just get so drunk and have so much fun and meet so many new people and and it was super fun. Um I don't drink anymore, but and not because I, you know, have a chip or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just just stopped doing it because mainly Bethany got tired of having to worry about me waking up in the morning to light the pit. So well, that sounds that, that sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> we have no idea what you're talking about. But yeah, I, yeah. Hmm. But uh, Tim Grant, he, I was super hammered talking to him, and then uh, he came by, brought me some rub that he was using and uh, told me to use it on brisket. And I believe we got a call on that. And just guys like that. I had Ryan Murphy with Dirt Road um, helped a lot. Chris Hoisington with Hunka. Uh, Brad, obviously, Tim. Yeah, just a lot of the guys that were cooking a lot when we first came on. Like, I wasn't shy about going and talking to them. You know, Randy Robinette with Our Butts Are Smoking. Um, it was really helpful. Um, Joe Pierce, um, you know, and then just taking the classes. I think taking the classes is is the advantage that, that cooks have nowadays versus, you know, 10, 15 years ago is that it is a this the learning curve is so much flatter now than what it used to be. Um, because so many people are willing to share, you know, and, and monetize what they've accomplished and, and what they're doing, which, I, you know, it's, it's America, right? It's pretty awesome that right. teams and people are able to do that. You know, you, it's good to get rewarded for your, uh, you know, Absolutely. and, and you, you definitely see, you know, the ones that do seem to sell out their classes and stuff are the necessarily it doesn't have to be the most winning team right doing that it's it's teams that people trust and mm -hmm. and believe that they are going to be told what exactly what they did and you know and are doing and so on exactly well, especially with the league and you have so many opportunities and i know that 
Bethany has her YouTube channel and has been doing videos for the league as well. And all those online opportunities have really helped improve cooks and, and getting the results that they'd like as well. Yeah. And, and we've, we've gone out to, to, and this is when I first met Leanne was we went out and cooked it. We've cooked a Sterling balls contest a couple of times out in California. And mm. I'm telling you, I, uh, Jeff with Slaughterhouse Five and JB, like you talk about people really like putting out their hand and helping to be able to fly into a contest. And we actually went out and cooked the contest out in California that used to be at the horse race track. They haven't had it in a couple of years with COVID. And I, there was some an issue with the horses getting sick, I think, in 2019. But they he actually let us use his truck and his jambo and in la track let us drive it in la track like completely trusted us to <laughs> to borrow you know his stuff and the, that kind of stuff is is really i think what is really awesome about barbecue um earlier last year uh, i guess it wasn't earlier last year it was last year there was a team from texas that needed he was flying in from texas and wanted to cook and it was it was right around when ibca kind of shut down mm -hmm. and he was starting to cook on uh he wanted to cook and so kcbs was still having events um and he flew in and you know i told him i'm like look man you get to my house i'll have my truck and my trailer and i'll hand you the keys and you go do you you know um I, I he was cooking on on cans i believe or or something so i didn't have cookers for him to cook on but you know i and i didn't really know the guy i just kind of knew of him i met him one time at a contest down in houston earlier that year with before covid kind of came on and and it was uh, uh uh you know i just trusted him because he was a barbecue guy you know right yeah. barbecue family is amazing so Thank you for letting us pick your brain and letting us know some of the little ins and outs of 913. So before you go, there's a question that Luke likes to ask and we like to ask it too. So if you could have a giant billboard anywhere with anything on it, it could be metaphorically speaking, get a message out to message out to pit masters or teammates on a barbecue team, what the world do you think it would say? and why oh gosh i think it would probably be related to the conspiracy that joe and brad are cheating somehow and that's <laughs> why that's why they're cooking so well right now i know uh, it i i you've heard it here on ovs pitmaster podcast I, I, that would probably be, you know, have you seen these guys cheat, you know, and have their pictures and have a phone number for somebody to call with tips on how they're cheating at barbecue contests to do so well. That like could that, be on the billboard, a big wanted poster. Exactly. That's would, exactly what I think. Would the reward be a stuffed unicorn or a love burrito? Oh, I would say um, we probably, if somebody could provide some concrete proof, um, because, you know, that would give me a GC because Brad beat me by like a tenth of a point you know, oh. a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that just, and, oh, that's like a throat punch. Ooh. I know. And it's like, come on, dude, we need this. Like, it's we're in a dry spell like no other. Um, but I, they probably could get both, you know. I, wow. I, might, I might even throw in a Yeti cup. Oh, what about one of those hugs? One of those hugs you talked about at the beginning. Oh, I'll um, just do that no matter what. Like, that's free, along with a smile. Yeah. yeah. I especially, like I, I like that that, you know. Yeah. Especially if they use like a like a like a uh, um, dial, you know, body wash or something, you know, that smells real good. Like mm -hmm. is that getting too creepy? Am I getting creepy with that? You really can't get too creepy on this podcast. <laughs> nope, not at all. 
Well, David, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking with us about your life as a, as a teammate on 913 and all the great things that you and Bethany are doing. So do you have anything that you'd like to say, a shout out to your sponsors, things that 913 is going to be up to soon? Uh, I would say, you know, well, we got the football's coming, so we're going to be at games. 913 is going to be at the Royal and we're helping out with TNT barbecue. He uh, needed to borrow our trailer and stuff. So I'm helping him get stuff out to uh, the Jack. He got the Oklahoma draw for that. So, you know, twist my arm, Brent. And Brent, <laughs> you know, Brent. God, I just can't believe I said his name wrong. Anyway, but we're, uh, uh, and then after that, we'll, you know, we have one other comp and then we'll kind of be done for the year. And the KCBS Invitational, I think Bethany's going to go down and do something with the world foods, but I'm not uh, going to make it down there with her. Uh, and then uh, the Royal coming up, you know, the barbecue store will have everything you need. So reach out to them. They're, uh, they're good to us here in the Metro. So support yes. them. Yeah, definitely. Well, again David, thank you. Thank you so much. If, uh, if I manage to, to somehow, procure some goodies uh, from our mutual friends out there uh, in Arizona, you'll be uh, on my list. Oh, I this appreciate sounds that. Nefarious. Huh, well, I'm not going to say exactly what we're doing because then there'll be a line, but you know, you know, just trying to, trying to give a little wink and a nod. I will greatly appreciate that. And I'm so hoping to wake up and have a unicorn on our pit at the Royal. I, I, I can't wait till that happens. <laughs> Every girl's dream. Right. Well, and the uh, hug, too. And the hug. You got to have a hug from you know, the good-looking person on 913. <laughs> All a right. lot of people well, probably you. disagree with me on that. Yeah. Nonsense. Yeah. But she's not here to talk about it, so that's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you guys. again, David. Thanks, David. Bye. Thank you for listening to Pitmaster, an old Virginia Smoke podcast. Be sure to subscribe and like the podcast, rate the podcast, and share it out with all your friends on social media. Also, be sure to check out the Old Virginia Smoke YouTube channel as well. We continue our American Royal Week with a new episode tomorrow, so stay tuned. We have a lot of exciting stuff planned this week, this weekend at the Royal, and next week. So, for companies interested in advertising, please contact Old Virginia Smoke directly via www.oldvirginiasmoke.com. Pitmaster and Old Virginia Smoke Podcast is edited by Chris Sedanka. Pitmaster and Old Virginia Smoke Podcast is a property of Old Virginia Smoke LLC. All rights reserved. Copyright 2020. Yes. Old Virginia Smoke.